Well, hey there, welcome back to my channel. I am Dave, and today we've got a very specific topic to talk about, and that's the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro and what kind of power this thing consumes under various loads. So, I've done extensive testing on this thing because I was really interested in the battery life and I've recorded my findings. So, that's what we're going to talk about in this video today because maybe someone out there might find this stuff useful. If not, uh, that's unfortunate. So if you don't know, these new 16 inch MacBook Pros are equipped with a 100 watt hour battery. And if you don't know what a watt hour is, it means if your computer's drawing 100 watts, you could draw that much power for one hour, watt hour. And the same goes for 50 watts. If you've got a 100 watt hour battery and you're drawing 50 watts, that means you could pull 50 watts for two hours. And if you do the math, you can go on and on from there. 25 watts would equal four hours of activity and so on and so forth. So I was really curious uh, what kind of battery life I'd get out of the M1 Max variant of the MacBook Pro because obviously the Max variant uses more power, it's got more GPU cores, it's got more encoders, all kinds of stuff. And I was really curious what kind of power this thing would be sucking down from the wall and from the battery. And so for science, I went out and I bought one of these. This is a watt meter and so if I plug this into the wall and plug the MacBook into this, it'll actually tell me in real time how much power the laptop is consuming. And for all the testing in this video, I went ahead and charged the MacBook Pro to 100% to make sure that the power that I was seeing from the outlet was actually reflecting the power that was being used to accomplish the various tasks that I was doing for the test and not the amount of power it would take to charge the battery. So in this test, we basically rule out the battery and we're just seeing what kind of power this 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro can consume under various loads. I didn't really see this information anywhere else on the internet, so I thought I would take a stab at it. Also, another thing I was really curious about specifically with the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro is that there's actually a setting in the power settings that there's a low setting for low power mode and then there's a high power mode and that's supposed to give you more or less performance depending on how much battery you want to use. So you can put it in high power mode to get the most out of your laptop or low power mode to get the most battery life out of your laptop. And I was curious how those modes actually affect how much power the laptop's consuming. And I've got some really interesting testing results around these low and high power modes that you're gonna wanna stick around for. Oh yeah, and if you find this video interesting or helpful or entertaining or anything, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I'm trying to grow this channel and it's still pretty small right now and that really helped me out. Okay, let's move on. All right, so the first test result I wanna talk about is with the laptop idling and the lid closed. So basically it's in sleep mode, the lid it's closed, how much wattage is it pulling from the wall? Good news, uh, almost no power is being consumed while the laptop's asleep. It's actually really impressive. My watt meter was saying like 0.01 watts was being pulled from the wall. So essentially the laptop can basically sleep in not consume any battery at all. And in practical use in everyday life, I've noticed this as well. If you charge the laptop to 100% and leave it for a couple of days, when you open the lid, it's still gonna be at 100%, which is really cool. The next test I did was basically a low load test, I'll call it, where I would open Chrome and just browse various websites like YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. And then I would see what kind of wattage we were pulling from the wall. Now this did vary quite a bit. For instance, if I played back a video in Chrome on YouTube, it would actually pull up to around 17 watts, but it wouldn't be continuous, it would kind of fluctuate a little bit. However, if I went to an easier to digest website like uh, Facebook, uh, it would be much lower. So I was seeing anywhere between like, you know, nine to 10 watts at a given time during those tests. And these results are actually pretty good and do align with Apple's claims of about 11 hours of web browsing and normal use. Uh, because if you're pulling 10 watts of power during web browsing and you've got a 100 watt hour battery, that would imply about 10 hours of use. So that's pretty good. Oh yeah, and all this testing was done with brightness set at 50%. It wasn't all the way up and it wasn't set very low, right in the middle where I'd typically use it. The next test I did was open up Final Cut Pro and then kind of just scrub around the timeline play and pause the timeline, uh, move back and forth over the timeline, change some color grading, play it back, add effects, etc normal stuff you do in Final Cut Pro. And then I averaged out what kind of power we were seeing pulled from the wall from the watt meter to 
get an idea of how much power we're consuming while using Final Cut Pro. Uh, the numbers were kind of all over the place depending on what I was doing. Scrubbing actually spiked the wattage up to like 50 or 60 watts, but just kind of idling and playing and pausing the clips in the timeline, it could be as low as 20 watts, which is really low. So it's hard to say what the average here is. Uh, I can say in practical use with this M1 Max MacBook Pro, I have spent six plus hours editing a single project in Final Cut Pro without killing the battery. It has been pretty low after that, but I didn't kill it. So I would say those numbers kind of line up. Okay, and the final test I did with this MacBook Pro M1 Max was kind of a stress test. I opened Cinebench R23, and I also opened Geekbench with the Metal Compute tab, and I ran both the GPU and the CPU at the same time to try to max out the chip completely to see how much wattage we'd be pulling from the wall. Now during this test, I actually got over 100 watts. I actually saw 110 watts on the watt meter at a given point in time. It didn't stay at 110 watts, but it would fluctuate. So that's to say, if you were to max out the CPU and GPU and run this thing full tilt, 100% throttle uh, for an hour, you could potentially kill the battery in the M1 Max in the 16 inch version with the 100 watt hour battery in about an hour, which is pretty quick. Now that might be cause for concern, me saying that. However, I don't think in real life you'll ever see that happen because you're never going to be hammering the CPU and GPU that hard for that duration of time unless you're opening a game or something like that like if you're intending on playing Fortnite at 100% in ultra settings with high resolution maybe you'd get there but in any productivity task like video editing audio editing uh, I don't think you'll ever get in that kind of situation but that's not where this ends I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I want to test out the low and high power mode and that's what I did. I ran the same high stress test with Cinebench and Geekbench running, hammering the CPU and GPU at the same time in low power mode and high power mode. And the results were pretty interesting. So first let's talk about high power mode. Essentially this should allow the computer to max out its fan profile and let the CPU run as hot as it wants in order to get the most performance. And what I saw was actually exactly the same amount of wattage being drawn from the wall as I saw in automatic mode. So what this tells me is that the computer in automatic mode was already going into high power mode and ramping up the fans for the sake of performance because I was hammering the CPU and the GPU at the same time. Now more interestingly, let's talk about low power mode. This is where I saw some interesting results. So in doing the same test with uh, Cinebench running and Geekbench running, hammering the CPU and GPU, in low power mode, the wattage coming from the wall only spiked up to about 70 watts, but it was actually fluctuating. Now this is substantially lower than what we saw in automatic and high mode. So this low power mode is definitely doing something. It's definitely reducing how much power that CPU and GPU is taking in. And that's interesting because in high power mode, we were seeing a max of about 100 watts. And in low power mode, we were seeing a max of about 70 watts. So in real life, that would actually save you quite a bit of battery life. And what I found really interesting about low power mode on the 16 inch M1 Max is that the low power mode didn't really have any effect on performance when I was video editing or editing audio in Adobe Audition and working in Adobe Premiere, basically any creative task. I didn't really notice the difference between high power mode and low power mode. And that's probably because of the built-in encoders on the chip and all the, the acceleration happening, but I thought I'd see more of an impact. So what does all this tell us? Well, it's not not much really. I mean, this is pretty unscientific. I'm just doing my best here and I thought I'd share my findings with you. But from what I'm seeing here, if I plan on traveling and bringing my laptop with me, I might kick it into low power mode in order to save a little bit of battery life. I might even use low power mode if I'm like editing videos at my kitchen table and I don't wanna have to go get my charger because it's probably gonna last a little bit longer. And all in all, in real life practical use when it comes to battery life with the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, uh, I've been seeing six plus hours of video editing with this thing without a problem. So if you've been worried because of all the other YouTube videos out there talking about battery life and how short it can be with the M1 Max, I'd say just don't worry because it has not been an issue for me and I'm somebody who really values battery life. And to be honest, this thing blows the pants off any Windows machine out there. So keep that in mind as well. In either case, it's kind of a rant video and I just want to share some of the data I collected with 
with this M1 Max doing my battery life testing. Keep in mind, I'm no computer geek and I'm not that scientific, but this is just what I, the best way I figured of doing this. If you found this video helpful or entertaining or anything, consider hitting that thumbs up button down below and subscribing to my channel because I'd like to grow this channel a little bit more. That'd be really nice. And of course, if you're interested in an M1 Max MacBook Pro, I've got them linked down below and those help support my channel. So uh, check out those links. And now I want to hear from you. Do you have an M1 Max MacBook Pro or an M1 Pro MacBook Pro? Let me know about your battery life experience so far with your laptop in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. Okay, I think I'm done now. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>